as we all know, fans are the lifeblood of sports, but the relationship between those passionate about their team and the athletes has gotten ugly recently. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs to the 50. He runs to the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. Taking it back to the house. He's got it. Oh, he gets grabbed by a fan. This were flying in the stands, and tonight we're learning how these fans were dealt with after their ballpark. You gotta run. stay out of the field of play, and he about rips the face. Oh, man. They're they're coming the from the woods. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40 yard line. Being a fan is a universal phenomenon. Even if you aren't into sports, we've all seen crowds go wild in stadiums. Got it! People are sports fans for a variety of different reasons, but every fan is a sports fan because sports are simply entertaining. The greatest thing that I ever seen right here is people taking off their shirts. I never take off my shirt, but against LAFC, when we win and we score the last goal, and that was the winner goal, I take off my shirt. It's the rush of adrenaline and dopamine that enters our body when watching an intense play the feeling of pressure and satisfaction when our favorite team scores a point, and the anger or sadness we feel when a game doesn't result in our favor. This experience is what keeps people interested, even as a spectator. And while being a spectator might just be a casual activity for anyone, watching sports can be more than just a pastime. I like winning, that helps me a lot. And but more important is a full stadium. You give me a full stadium, I'll destroy the place, even if we're losing. This is Crazy George. He's most known for inventing the wave, and throughout the last 50 years, he has professionally cheered for teams such as the Oakland Athletics, San Jose Earthquakes, and more. But even before his career began, Crazy George was known as one of the most recognized fanatics in the San Francisco Bay Area. I quit teaching in 1975. I've been doing it for a living now for 47 years. Today, there are other fanatics like Crazy George who show extreme pride in the teams they love. I don't like losing. I don't like to the game and go home angry. I like a winning team. And that's where my passion comes from. I want to support my team from the beginning to an end. And back them up. I back them up outside. They need to back me up inside the pitch. And that's where my passion comes from. Whether it's through screaming, chanting, or even taking off their shirts, these type of fans don't hold back. These riled up fans can be called sports fanatics. That, that's what, I mean, your blood is just starting to pump and you don't think you just do. And although their high spirit is what makes a great crowd, what are the mental, emotional, and physical effects of being such a hardcore fan? Being a sports fan can be beneficial to our lives. There are two main benefits of being a sports fan. Sports gives us a few things. One, it gives us a, an opportunity to feel um, belonging. Uh, if you think about it, we are social creatures. We want to be a part of a social group. And the, the wonderful thing about sports is, even at an individual level, we have something to connect to. And particularly for team sports, it allows us to connect in a way that is different sometimes or frequently than, than in our normal human connections, you know, with family, friends, um, workplace, etc. Essentially, sports fill our social needs as humans. We constantly desire a place to belong, a community where we can share the same interests with other people. With sports, fans can bond with their family and friends, and even meet other fans along the way. Many sports fans also create opportunities for their community, such as coordinating colors of jerseys to hosting their own tailgates and invasions. When we participate in social events, we feel less alone and more valued. It can even help fans develop a stronger sense of who they are. I love the fan base. I tell you, I love they travel with the team. I love the support. I love the 49er fans. When I look out there, and we're in Los Angeles and you see a sea of red, that is love. That's dedication to your team. We want to 
watch people win or lose. It's a very primitive part of who we are, and it allows us to all come together behind an athlete or a team of athletes. And in that sense, we can join around something that's a little simpler than the complexities of our daily lives. It's not all about winning that keeps fans on board. It's the personal connection that a fan has for their team. These connections represent a piece of someone's life, memories that are unique to every individual fan. This is what makes sports fans truly loyal to their team. Secondly, being a sports fan can teach us valuable life lessons. It can teach us some important lessons about stress, pressure, anger management, teamwork. So there are definitely some larger psychological lessons that we can learn. And you see this all the time in the way people talk about teams, the team chemistry, the team came together. They stayed strong under pressure. On the surface level, sports merely involve teams going up against one another. However, for the fans watching, their pride and hope are challenged. These same emotions are present in our actual lives. Sports, however, gives us an outlet to express these feelings without putting personal stakes on the line. This is what makes being a sports fan so valuable. Fanaticism clearly has plenty of positive attributes, and one should not be ashamed of being a so-called fanatic. However, when does one's support for a team become harmful? Usually it's opposing fans, you know, like a, a Bulls fan and a Lakers fan, or a Celtics fan and a Philly fan. Uh, usually it's opposing fans, more than likely alcohol is involved. It probably starts out as just banter and just kind of like, oh, your team sucks, no, your team sucks, or your favorite player is worse than my favorite player. It, usually it starts out that way. Uh, sometimes it can get personal and, and, I don't know, someone spills a drink here and, or something happens and just kind of erupts, but um, it happens all the time. There are a few notable examples of violent behavior that has been done by sports fanatics. One of the most common things that occur is people running onto courts or fields, which may disrupt the game or even put people's lives at risk. Here, a fan storms the field at PayPal Park, reportedly upset about a call. He takes a swing at one player before being taken down by another. In the parking lot, the brawl apparently escalated. Soon, San Jose police estimate there were 50 people fighting, and in the mayhem, gunfire erupted. Usually this comes from adrenaline, but others might do it for attention. Either way, trespassing can result in a lifetime ban from the venue, criminal charges, and even jail time. Another common behavior is vandalism. Even after a win, fans will sometimes storm the streets and destroy public or private property. In 2014, the San Francisco Giants won the World Series. After this win, fans celebrated on the streets, setting bonfires, painting graffiti, and lighting fireworks. Fans celebrating the Giants' win ran into the streets amid the fireworks and bonfires. At least two people were shot, suffering non-life-threatening injuries. Another person was stabbed. Several officers were injured by thrown bottles. Tidex security is expected for tomorrow's victory parade. On game day, sports fans tend to consume alcohol in large amounts. But once a fan is intoxicated, there is a greater risk of engaging in violent behavior. According to The Economist, alcohol consumption can increase domestic abuse incidents in a sports fan base. The fan, who is more of a fanatic anyway, independent of any substances, they define themselves by the, by the sport itself, by the team itself. Their self-worth is driven by how well that team is doing. Um, and then you layer on top of that a substance problem, and now you've got a person with two problems. And each of those problems interact with one another and create a heightened sense of problem. Incidents like these are what create a hostile environment in the sports community. But this kind of violent behavior can also affect players on the team. It was at 3.30 a.m. in front of this restaurant. 27-year-old Andres Escobar got into his car. He was surrounded and shot 12 times and killed. Allegedly, one of the assailants yelled, thanks for the auto goal. 1994 World Cup player Andres Escobar scored into his own goal and gave up a 1-0 lead to the United States. Escobar was attempting to clear a pass from the opposing team, but ended up scoring on his own net. The defeat outraged many fans, leading them to kill Andres Escobar. While these extreme acts are less common, they can change people's perspectives on being a sports fan. To clarify, not all sports fanatics engage in violent behavior. 
There are fanatics who will do anything for their team's success, such as incorporating superstitions into their lives. I started listening to games on the radio. I'm, the 49ers have never lost a game every time I've listened on the radio. And the, a couple weeks back, um, the Atlanta Falcons, I listened to that game on the radio, and that was the first time the 49ers ever lost when I listened on the radio. There is a large variety of superstitions that many fanatics follow. According to Topico Sportsbook, about 50% of sports fans have a certain jersey they consider lucky to wear on a game day. Another 42% sit in a specific spot on their couch or in the stands during a game. And 38% feel that a particular family member holds bad luck. These behaviors may seem harmless at first, but for some fanatics, it can start to create conflict in their daily lives. Yes, we're all Cowboy fans, every single one of us. I was uh, from a family of uh, Eight brothers and two sisters, big family, and uh, there was no way out of that. It was when we were born, we were told, you belong to be a cowboy for life. Thanksgiving was one of the hardest because on Thanksgiving, um, my grandmother had a thing. If we won, we feast. If we lost, it was horrible because uh, uh, my dad would say, hey, my grandmother said, put the turkey away. We're not going to celebrate a loss. And we'd all get really angry and mad, like, wow. That was uh, one of the hardest things that we went through as growing up. The house would be small, like turkeys, you could smell the cherry and apple pie and all the dessert, all the stuff, stuffing. And um, it would really get put and be done. It turns into more than being a fanatic when someone starts to revolve their life around a team. There's a line between one's personal identity and their fan identity with sports. And when this line is crossed, fanatics start to lose sight of who they are outside of sports. By the team's success or failure, they define their social interactions um, completely by the social uh, realm of, the, of, of working with the team and being a fan of the team. And they no longer have that perspective that this is a part of who I am, it becomes who they are. And in those situations, we go from fandom to fanaticism and fanaticism in an unhealthy way. This obsession can also lead to uncontrollable behavior. Fanatics will start to put their emotional and physical health on the line, even if they don't realize it. I'll tell you a story in Fremont. I used to live here in Fremont and I had one of the older big screen TVs. And my aggression is I threw a bowling ball through the TV. And then big screen TVs used to be really big, you know. And I didn't realize, but when the bowling ball went through it, because we lost against Washington Redskins, it blew up like a bomb. Like it just went poof, all this black smoke all over my apartment. So the fire department gets there and what happened? They thought it was actually a bomb, but no, it was, I threw my bowling ball through the big screen 50 inch TV. And uh, I showed him the bowling ball inside the TV. And what happened? I told him, Cowboys lost, so. At the end of the day, there will always be winners and losers in sports. And when an individual starts to lose themselves, they become more involved in a sports team than they should be. These individuals who cross the line are why we see violent behavior from sports fanatics today. But are they damaging to the sport itself? Well, you don't necessarily damage the sport, but you just take away from people's experience. Because if I go to a game and you're all rough sitting next to me, then you've ruined my day. I don't know if they're damaging the, the sport um, as much as maybe they're damaging the overall game day um, experience. For people who do just want to go, who have their wife and their, their two sons, or their, you know, the dad who takes his daughter. Um, and unfortunately, you know, yeah, you see like some of these NFL games, I mean, they get nasty sometimes, right? And you know, people get on Twitter and they look at this fight between a, you know, a fan for the Chargers and a fan for the Raiders and they kind of laugh and ha-ha. But what people don't think about sometimes or they don't care about is there was, yeah, there was a dad with his six-year-old daughter uh, sort of right in the middle of that, you know, who didn't need to be. There are always going to be negative experiences in any community, but this doesn't justify bad behavior from any sports fan. As these fan bases continue to grow, we must be mindful of our well-being and the well-being of those around us. There are boundaries that fans must be aware of to further prevent damaging the community overall. Without fanatics, the sports community wouldn't be the same. Sports has always brought people together, and it's through the fans that keep the spirit of a game alive.